In this video, I'll be teaching you how to complete the Outbreak Easter Egg as detailed and as quick to the point as possible. Before your game begins, you want to make sure you have a good loadout. Now, this can be completed both solo and co-op, so I'm going to recommend loadouts and field upgrades for both solo and co-op. Solo, you're going to want to run Frenzied Guard as your field upgrade, and in co-op, you want at least one person running Ring of Fire as well as a blend of Frenzied Guard and potentially Healing Aura. The loadout weapon, I highly recommend this M16 build as it has incredible damage. If you find this guide useful, spare a second to slap a like on it and let's jump in. Jumping into the game you can't start this easter egg until round three and whatever round you start it on the game will end two rounds later so whilst you progress up to round three by completing the objectives it's important to complete the side objectives as well consider the first two rounds for you to maximize everything you have by completing every side easter egg hunting every chest around the map so you can get a ton of points early on as well as a load of salvage because you'll need it make sure you're buying perks or getting them for free from the world events and upgrading your weapons pack a punch and weapon rarity it's especially worth looking out for these fury crystal world events because they'll grant one player a three tier upgrade for their weapon and in later rounds where this is too expensive to do this is invaluable once you've made it to round three the first step of the easter egg begins I'll explain this step as quickly as i can and then i'll showcase every location for this on every map so somewhere on the map is going to be a radio and three signal amplifiers now this step is not marked on your mini map and shouldn't be confused with the side easter egg quest that also involves radios and amplifiers is. Now it's super useful turning on your subtitles at this point by going to your settings, interface and enabling subtitles. The subtitles will appear when you're near the radio and for what we need to do with the free amplifiers. Activate this radio, you'll hear alarm bells ringing which will spawn a load of zombies. Once you've taken out all the zombies, the ringing should stop and be replaced with an active static noise and some audio of Samantha talking. And with subtitles, these are labeled 1 to 8. You'll then need to go to the three signal amplifiers around that area and change the signal to the same active static noise. The subtitles really help here. Now when cycling through the amplifiers you will sometimes come across the feedback sound alarm spawning more zombies and you just have to take those out before you can cycle to get the sound that you're looking for. Once all three signal amplifiers have been tuned to the same active noise go back to the main radio interact with it to get the full signal and you should get the new beacon part. Here is every single radio and the three signal amplifiers on each map. And if you're looking for locations for a specific map just use the timestamp. Once you've completed this step, you'll then need to complete the objective of that round, activate the beacon like you normally would to go to the next map. When using the beacon, you'll have a new prompt of a telephone to talk to Samantha Maxis. Once the conversation's over, you'll see the terminal screen now show an M on the beacon. Warp to the next map and we can move on to step two. Once you're on round four, Samantha will tell you to find a mark that Ravanov's left, which is the form of a monkey bomb. Now, there are four on every map and you're specifically looking for a monkey bomb which has an M marked next to it. If you find it, shoot the monkey bomb and it should drop a film reel for you to pick up. I'm now going to show you all four locations for each monkey bomb on every map and like before if you're looking for a specific map just click ahead for the timestamps.
Once you've picked up this film reel piece, you'll now need to take it to a projector somewhere in the map. You'll then need to advance through a few different slides as Samantha explains the storyline of this easter egg. And once she mentions that you need to find Ravenov in Ruka, this step is completed. Here is the locations of each projector on every map, aside from Ruka, because Ruka doesn't have one. The next step is you're going to want to advance to the next round which is going to force you on the map Ruka and at this point you're tied to the main easter egg objective you can't complete any other main objectives I would try to complete every side objective on this round before you go ahead with the next step use the fury crystal event if you need to to get those tier 5 rarity upgrades to your weapon and be sure to check everywhere before you continue as you might get lucky like I did with this ray gun in this random loot chest once all players in the game are ready make your way to this elevator here on Ruka. With all players on the elevator, press the button and it will take you down to the missile silos. Now things are going to get pretty hectic from this point onwards. You're going to be in missile silo D and you're going to run up the staircase up to the top floor and then through this little area with loads and loads of computers to make your way towards the tunnel that's labeled A. From here, you're going to want to drop down and make your way to this panel, which you activate to end the lockdown. Once you've deactivated the lockdown, a cutscene will Will commence and after that you'll be tasked to find three launch keys. Our first launch key is going to take us back to this main central computer area that connects all the three missile silos together. But be warned there are tons of objects in this room that turn into mimics and there's going to be a ridiculous amount of them so it's best to spawn them in and then take care of them in either one of the three missile silos before you continue. There is a ridiculous amount of these when you're playing co-op so really be careful because it will catch you off guard. Once those are out of the way, make your way back to the main computer room and there's going to be a tunnel labeled C with a dead soldier at the end of it in a dead end. Interacting with it is going to spawn in a red mimic, which is a much stronger mimic than the typical mimic. But once it is defeated, it will drop our first launch key. For our second launch key, you'll want to make your way to Rocket Silo B. On the bottom floor of Rocket Silo B, there's going to be this corner computer with a Ethereum harvesting unit. You're going to want to interact with it which will cause the canister to rise and then you and your teammates are going to have to go around and shoot ethereum crystals these are going to drop ethereum crystal chunks and you're going to collectively collect 20 of these now the inventory is shared so if you pick up five and someone else picks up 10 you're both going to have 15 so with whatever crystals you've picked up make your way over to the harvesting unit hold down your interact button and it's going to be depositing the ethereum crystals once they're deposited you're going to have a small wave of zombies spawn out of nowhere that you're going to want to take out before the unit will allow you to pick up the harvesting canister. Once that wave has been taken out, you'll be able to pick up the ethereum canister and you'll want to make your way to rocket silo D. If you go to the bottom floor, you're going to notice on one side is a massive jellyfish and you're going to want to climb up a few flights of stairs behind the jellyfish so you're staring right at it with this weird glowing grass underneath you. Whatever platform you're playing on, activate the ethereum field upgrade and it's going to suck you into the jellyfish and whilst you're floating downwards there's going to be the second launch key for you to pick up this key can be quite hard to see sometimes so just keep holding your interact during this process and you'll pick it up and the last and final launch key will involve us going to rocket silo a on the bottom floor labeled a2 there's going to be a little tunnel where at the back of the tunnel you're going to find an unmarked essence trap with a banana on it if you've completed firebase z before then this will be a familiar concept Somewhere around the room is going to be a glowing blue vent, which contains a ether monkey. If you get too close to the monkey, it will disappear. 
But what you'll want to do is get close to where the monkey appears in the vent and throw down your essence trap somewhere near it. It doesn't have to be directly on it because if you do, you'll fail it. But somewhere in the general vicinity of that vent, you'll want to throw this up, walk away so the monkey appears and then watch closely as the monkey teleports out of the vent and then onto your essence trap. When you see it on top of the essence trap, you'll want to double tap your interact button and that will trap the monkey in the essence trap. If you don't complete this step, correctly you'll be given back the essence trap and the monkey will move to another vent in rocket silo a so just keep looking keep listening for it and try it again remember to pick up your essence trap and that will be your third and final launch key with all three keys you'll now be given the objective to start the launch sequence and in each of the three rocket silos is going to be a corresponding launch station this is what it looks like in rocket silo a this is what it looks like in rocket silo b and this is what it looks like in Rocket Silo D. Now you only have 30 seconds to activate all three of these launch computers in a random order. Some games my sequence was D, A, B, and other games it was A, D, B. You're just gonna have to trial and error this one. You'll hear audio quotes if the sequence is incorrect and you'll simply have to wait 30 seconds to a minute before you can attempt this again. Now once you activate this launch sequence, this is the point of no return. So definitely make sure you have a full Fully upgraded shield, you finish any weapon upgrades you might need, and craft some stuff at the buildable bench. I definitely recommend self revives, death machines, chopper gunners, all really useful stuff. Once the sequence has begun, you'll want to make your way back to the main connecting all through rocket silos and make your way up the staircase where you'll have a door to activate to lead you into the boss fight. Now, at this point, you have a set amount of time to complete this fight. Nine minutes to be exact, but with the boss spawning in, you only have about eight and a half. So how exactly does this boss fight work? Well, the Legion boss takes damage from you shooting directly into its chest. And this is what you'll want to focus on whilst trying training around the zombies. It is incredibly hectic, so I definitely want you to pay attention to the amount of zombies you're training up whilst you're focusing fire on the Legion, as it's very easy to become overwhelmed with the amount of zombies that are behind you. Once you've put enough damage into the Legion's chest, it will teleport to a side of the map where it will release three small orbs. It's at this point that if you're in a co-op game, you all coordinate shooting the same orb. So I started with the bottom left while popping a ring of fire. One of my teammates in the ring of fire, so they get the additional damage, whilst the third player used Frenzy Guard to attract all the zombies to him. Now you can get right up close to him during the orb phase if you're using something like a shotgun, but be aware that once this phase is over, everywhere outside of this little circle is out of bounds and you will get hurt from it. At this point, you need to recharge your field upgrade, so I definitely would prioritize killing some of the zombies to get that back. And once over half of it is filled, I'd then go back to shooting the Legion's chest again. If you're running this in co-op, your comms need to be super clear. As with such limited time to complete this boss fight, you can't really afford to make any mistakes. If ammo is running low, you have one ammo crate that you can buy from, but that's about it. Like I mentioned earlier when it came to getting kill streaks for this fight, the chopper gunner is fantastic at putting a load of damage into the Legion whilst the remaining players can focus on taking out the zombies. Simply put though, Legion is a huge bullet sponge, so don't expect to be taking him out too quickly. Running long range weapons is definitely going to be beneficial for destroying his armor and getting him into this orb phase. Once you've destroyed all three crystals, you've completed the outbreak Easter egg. You'll get the ending cutscene and you'll get rewards with a dark ops i really hope you found this video useful if you did a like would be super appreciated subscribe for more tutorials like this Treyarch have announced a second main easter egg quest coming to outbreak so be sure to stay tuned for that and on your screen you can find all of my previous cold war zombies easter egg guys if you're looking for some help on d machine firebase c and the future dlc map still to come thank you for watching i'll see you next time